Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be breaking down issue one of Mark Miller's big crossover event comic called Big Game. I'm really excited to cover this one because I've covered a lot of Mark Miller's other books here on my channel, and this book is supposedly going to tie into almost all of them. Such an ambitious project, so I'm really curious if he's going to be able to pull it off and make a good story out of it. Now, most specifically, this book is a sequel to Wanted, so if you haven't read all of Mark Miller's other books, I would at least check out Wanted before you dive into this one. Now, within the first issue, we already have references and characters from many other Mark Miller books, such as Nemesis Reloaded, Kick-Ass, Starlight, Prodigy, The Ambassadors, Jupiter's Legacy, as well as a brief mention of Nightclub and Chronauts, so he's already tying into a lot here in this debut issue. Alright, let's dive into it now. Issue 1 of Big Game, and let's see how good it is. Big Game, Issue 1, written by Mark Miller, art by Pepe Larez, and colors by Giovanna Nero. Big Game begins with a flashback back to 1986, to the characters from the Wanted book series. This is when the villains beat the heroes and made the world forget about them. We see an unknown hero lying on the ground. He is dying. Then we see the villains from Wanted there, standing over that hero. From left to right, they are Sucker, Mr. Rictus, the original killer. This is the person that was Wesley Gibson's dad. Wesley Gibson is the main character from the original Wanted book. There is the Imp, Fuckwit, the Fox, Shithead, and Dollmaster. Mr. Rictus is holding up a skeleton and he says, I know what you're thinking. Your teammate with the magic ring should be here to relieve you from monitor duty soon, but he was early, I'm afraid. We got him as soon as he stepped out of the teleporter. So it seems like the villains here killed whomever the Green Lantern analog is in this world. Mr. Rictus then drops the bones of that ring-wielding hero to the ground. The villains, they then continue to mock the dying hero in front of them. They gloat about how they will now rule the world and make people forget that heroes even existed. We then jump to the current day now in 2023. Wesley Gibson, the son of the original killer and the lead character in the original Wanted series, is talking to Nemesis. This is sort of picking things up right where we left things off back in Nemesis Reloaded. On the TV in the background, we also see a scene from Jupiter's Legacy. I think the characters from Jupiter's Legacy were once real in this world, but now they have been resorted to just being purely fiction. They are just characters on a TV show, and the world doesn't know that they were ever more than just that. Wesley tells Nemesis, My name is Wesley Gibson, and my father was a leader in this fraternity of super criminals. Once he died, I was trained to take his place. Now, I rule the world in his absence. Nemesis, who is supposed to be like, what if Batman was evil? Asks Wesley what any of this has to do with him. Wesley tells him, the heroes are starting to appear again. Space heroes, time travelers, billionaire playboys, super teams. We got rid of them for a long time, but now they're growing like weeds. It's only a matter of time before they discover the ruse we pulled and how we manipulate the world. Nemesis asks, well, who does he want him to kill? Wesley answers, if they leave this any longer, they'll be up against 1986 kind of numbers of heroes again. So, let's just kill everyone while we still can. We then jump over to Little Hampton Elementary School in Small Town America. Space hero Duke McQueen is talking to some school children. Duke McQueen comes from the book Starlight, which by the way I think is my favorite Mark Miller book. You gotta check that one out if you have not. Duke McQueen, he was a space hero who saved the universe. He came back to Earth though and no one believed him. Years went by and he grew old, he was an old man, but he was called back into action to save the universe a second time. He succeeded, and this time when he returned to Earth, 
people believed him because he came back on a spaceship and landed on the White House lawn. The school children there in the elementary school are asking Duke if he still has his old spaceship. Duke answers, No, I drive a Ford Bronco now. It's easier on gas and less hassle to park. Duke's granddaughter is there in the school and she asks, Was it hard saving an alien world and nobody believing it happened, Grandpa? Duke answers, It was. They looked at me like a whack job, but then when the aliens landed on the White House lawn, it made it all worthwhile, because the truth always finds its way to the surface in the end, no matter how deep they try to bury it. Duke saying that is probably alluding to the villains in Wanted burying the truth of the heroes of the past that used to exist. We then jump over to North Dakota. We see Edison Crane, the world's smartest man. He comes from the book Prodigy. He is looking at the excavation site of some old burial ground, inside of which appears to be the statue of some sort of big head. Edison believes it is extraterrestrial. He adds, I've been funding digs all over the world and every new find seems to rewrite the conventional wisdom. I don't know if anyone has been actively suppressing it, but reality and the official narrative are increasingly at odds. At that excavation site, Edison is introduced to a woman named Bobby Griffin. Bobby says, I know you spend your spare time investigating the world's greatest mysteries and you're absolutely right. There really is a group of individuals who make it their business to hide the truth from ordinary people, but the real story is so much more awful than you could imagine. Come with me and I'll fill in all the blanks. So who is this Bobby Griffin woman? She seems to know all about how the villains from Wanted made the world forget the heroes ever existed. She wants to tell Edison what she knows. In Korea, at the headquarters of the Ambassadors, we see the leader of the Ambassadors, Chun Hee Chung, codename Korea. She is from a book called The Ambassadors. Chun Hee is a genius who has cracked the code into how to give normal people superpowers. She has used this ability to start a superhero team with representatives from all over the world. She tries to find deserving individuals. People write her and make their case why they deserve superpowers. And then she picks those she thinks are deserving. She gives them powers and they join her team. She is still expanding her roster and trying to get representatives from many more countries. By the end of Ambassadors Volume 1, she has representatives from many countries, but had still not decided on a representative from America yet. Chun Hee is talking with the Ambassador of India, Binu Bahadi. They are discussing how finding an American ambassador has been challenging. Every candidate they've tested seems to be hated by one half of the country or the other. They wonder, since when did America become so... Dickish? They are remotely talking to a new ambassador from Pakistan named Ahmed Khan. Ahmed Khan is doing some super heroics. He is traveling to the scene of a railway tunnel collapse. He is going to try and rescue some workers that are supposedly trapped in there. When he arrives to the tunnels, he sees that the workers aren't trapped, they've been murdered. And Ahmed, he then gets zapped by some electricity and goes down. Nemesis is the one that zapped him. Nemesis picks up Ahmed's communication device and talks back to the Ambassador Headquarters. Nemesis tells them to come and get him. Elsewhere, Dave Lazowski, the main hero from Kick-Ass, is now an adult. He is 31 years old. Dave has retired from his crime-fighting ways for now. He is just living a normal life with his girlfriend. He hasn't worn his suit in almost a decade. However, Dave is writing an email on his laptop. He is writing to Chun Hee, the leader of the Ambassadors. Dave believes that he should be given superpowers. He should be the Ambassador for America. He writes, My name is Dave Lazowski, and 14 years ago I was the world's first superhero. I made myself a costume, grabbed a couple of sticks, 
and went out to protect my neighborhood as Kick-Ass. A lot has obviously happened since then, but I like to think I maybe inspired all these amazing people out there like the Nightclub and the Chrononauts and your international rescue team, the Ambassadors. In fact, I've written to you a few times about joining the Ambassadors, but I know you're obviously swamped with submissions and it's not cool to nominate yourself. All I want to say is that nobody could want this more. I tried being a superhero when I didn't have any powers, so you can imagine how hard I'd work for a shot at the big time. I did a stint as a cop, a security guard, and even a short order chef, but nothing made me happier than being a real life superhero. I'm older now, and I've had a lot of knocks, but if you could please just give me this one chance, I promise you will not be disappointed. As Dave is typing this, his girlfriend comes into the room. I think the girlfriend is named Valerie. She was Dave's girlfriend at the end of Kick-Ass 3. Valerie says, are they still on for Ikea tonight? Dave, he thinks to himself, Ikea, Ikea, are you kidding me? You should be out there making a difference, man. Dave tells his girlfriend, uh, not tonight. He's just going to go to bed and listen to some true crime podcasts. Elsewhere, back over to Edison Crane from Prodigy. He is being driven by this woman he met recently named Bobby Griffin. She tells Edison that he and Chun Hee Chung have been on Wesley Gibson's radar for a long time now. The supervillains have controlled this world since 1986, and now people think it's always been like this. Robbed of the fantastic, no heroes in the skies. I'm the only one alive who even remembers the old days. Bobby pulls into what seems like a superhero headquarters of some sort, similar to maybe the Batcave. She explains, This is the headquarters of the man who trained me. They found out who he was and destroyed his home, but they didn't know what he had down here. This is where I ran when they released the memory wipe, and I've been hiding down here since I was... 19 years old. Edison asks, Are you who I think you are? Bobby answers, That's right, Dr. Crane. I'm the last of the old school superheroes. Now I need you to help me fix this shit. And with that, we end issue one of Big Game. All right, so that was the opening issue of the Big Game, and I thought this was really fun. I'm really excited to see where it's going to go. I want to see all the villains from Wanted and Nemesis teaming up, trying to kill all of these new heroes, and I want to see the heroes teaming up to try to take down all of these villains, so I'm excited for the potential of where this might go. Uh, I thought it was really fun seeing all of these different characters here. I think I was most excited to see Dave from Kick-Ass, and how he was potentially going to tie in with the Ambassadors book. He's writing the leader of the Ambassadors, and he's kind of saying, you know, why not give me some powers? So I think it would be really cool if he does join that team and does get himself some powers and see him joining everybody else. I love Duke McQueen from Starlight. We only had him briefly in here, but I'm really excited of the potential for where that might go. Uh, kind of fun seeing Edison Crane in here from Prodigy. And uh, where his character is going to tie into everything. He's met this new woman who potentially uh, might have some big secrets to reveal. She was potentially a hero back in the day living in hiding. So I really want to see where that kind of plays out. But yeah, this was a very exciting opening issue. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Really fun stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And I'll be back again in the future. I'm either going to cover big game issue by issue or I'm going to wait till it's all done and cover it all in one big video. But I will be back to cover it in one way or another. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all again in the future.